It all started one year ago, in January of 2020, when I was watching Awesome Games Done Quick on Twitch, a charity event where people showcased their skills in various games. On the live stream, there was this run, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out beaten by two players, both blindfolded. When watching it, I was completely fascinated. The raw precision, timing and execution needed to beat the game is already challenging with your eyes open, and I couldn't fathom how it could be possible blindfolded. And ever since watching that run, I couldn't stop thinking about trying to play blindfolded myself in my favorite game, Trekmania Nations Forever. To most people, it may just seem like a stupid idea. Why would you try beating a game that's clearly made to be played with your eyes open, blindfolded? The part that got me hooked was the challenge. The challenge in Trekmania Nations Forever is that it's a very fast-paced racing game. High speed and continuous driving is necessary to make it past most of the jumps and obstacles in the game with very little room for slowing down and setting yourself up for each part. Without being able to see, this was going to be a big problem, but I could still rely on visualization, logic, memory, and the feeling of pressing the keys. All skills that I'd passively built up through over 7 years of playing. But would it be enough to beat the game blindfolded? Well, there was only one way to find out. In November 2020, after a lot of practice, I started on my endeavor but I could never have anticipated just how difficult it would be. This is my journey through Trackmania Nations Forever, blindfolded. First of all, before I started driving, I had to set the rules for the challenge, because I was fairly confident that beating Trackmania Nations Forever blindfolded in a single sitting would be impossible. The game has a campaign of 65 tracks, and in order to beat the game, you have to complete all 65 tracks. Some of these have very precise jumps and turns that would take a while to pass, but the biggest obstacle was undoubtedly EL5 Endurance, the last track in the game. This track is notoriously 60 laps long and takes about 1 hour to finish when played at the highest level, and when blindfolded it could easily take several days. Because of this, I made myself two rules. Rule number one was that this would be a segmented run and I'd allow myself to take breaks between tracks. Rule number two was that I could not receive any help whatsoever during a run. This meant that no one could tell me anything about what I was doing wrong or where I had to go when I was blindfolded. I also didn't allow myself to listen to music or use a metronome to make things easier. The entire point of the challenge was to see if I could get through the entire game without being able to see, using only my brain and my remaining senses to find out where I had to go. So with that out of the way, I was ready to begin. The first thing you're probably thinking is how can you play Trackmania blindfolded? How on earth is it even possible? To demonstrate how it works, let's take AL1 Race as an example, the first track in the game. AL1 is a fairly basic track. It starts out with two small turns and a big drop down, but when you can't see anything, just doing this first part alone can be very difficult, and it's easy to get disoriented or lost. When playing blindfolded, you're always looking for consistency something reliable that you can pull off most of the time. So to get past the start, I had to do something called wall hugging, a technique where I would intentionally try to crash and locate where the outside wall was, and then hug against it all the way down the hill. This provided a sense of security as there was no possible way to crash or get disoriented once I found it. When I was sure I'd made it down the hill, I stopped steering against the wall so that when I got to the corner, the car would stop hugging the wall by itself, and I had successfully gotten the first checkpoint. But getting the first checkpoint on AO1 is rather easy. The hard part is getting from the checkpoint to the finish, because for this part you need to carry some speed to make the jump through the ring and onto the finish platform, and from there you have to locate the finish which is in the middle. But I had something planned for this as well. Here you can use something else to your advantage, the sound of the car's engine. The Trackmania car will automatically shift between gears when it reaches certain speeds, and these gear shifts are quite easy to hear. And since speed is just distance over time, I could use the car's gear shift as a measurement of how far I'd gotten on the track. From the checkpoint I went for a wall hug on the right, that would unhug by itself after the corner. Then I waited for two gear shifts, and a little bit after, I steered to the right. Doing this, I managed to get the ring and get onto the final platform, where I now just had to make my way to the finish line and I'd be done with the track. I started out by having roughly the correct idea about where I was. 
but as soon as you make one wrong guess, things quickly snowball out of control. I made many, many silly mistakes up on that platform, but ultimately, I found another wall to hug, and I knew that it came down to a 50-50 chance. Either my car was facing the correct way towards the finish, or it was dead wrong. I'm not sure about this. That corner is very far away. If there is a corner, that corner is very far away. Ah, uh, I, I wanna turn around. My gut tells me to turn around. I'm turning around. The 50-50 god. The absolute 50-50 god. Come on, that is... <laughs> that is crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> and that's how I finished AL1, the first track in the game blindfolded. Using wall hugging, gear shifts, and narrowing the odds down to a 50-50 actually made most of the white tracks fairly easy, and I completed them all in about two hours. But there were some very memorable moments. Finishing this one is fairly straightforward. You press forward, you crash once, you crash twice, and you release. You crash once, you crash twice, and you release. Something's weird here. Something's really weird. You crash once, crash twice, and you release. So yeah, uh, finishing 8-10 here is actually pretty simple. We crash twice, and then we get to the booster here. That was a good release. Yeah, works. Great tutorial. Works every time, man. Dirt makes so much noise, it's insane. Maybe? Sound good. <laughs> this really does not sound good. <laughs> what? Wait. Wait, 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 <laughs> I'll take it, but in my head, I'm like halfway across the map. Wow. <laughs> How did that even work? I'm so surprised. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. So this is actually a new route that I planned out and uh, I was able to execute it here uh, with stunning precision. With, uh, with stunning precision. So uh, I'm glad that strat worked actually. I practiced a lot, I practiced a lot. With the white tracks complete, we went on to the green series, into uncharted territory. I'd never tried the green tracks much blindfolded, and apart from a little bit of training, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. But it started out fairly smooth. BO1 and BO2 were straight up wall hug simulators, where all I had to do was follow the wall from the start all the way to the finish. BO3 had one tricky dirt part to clear, but apart from that, it too only took a few minutes. But then we got to BO4 Acrobatic, which looked daunting. At the time, I wasn't sure if I even wanted to attempt it. It had been such a good first day, completing the first 18 tracks in the game already, and I didn't want to ruin it by getting stuck on BO4 for the rest of the evening. But one thing I had in my favor was the boosters. Since boosters make a noise when you drive over them, it actually became rather doable to precisely time the first turn. And then, all I had to do was survive one wall ride and somehow find the finish. And well, let's just say it took less time than I had expected. Oh, I got gold as well! I got gold as well, wait. 
Yo! <laughs> Somehow, BO4 almost felt easy blindfolded. The track looked scary, but because I couldn't see it, all I had to do was focus on my steering movements, and they were rather easy. I decided to go for one final track to close out the first day, BO5 race. This track went also pretty smoothly up until the last checkpoint, where there was a long turn, followed by a booster and a jump up to the finish road. I first tried to just ballpark the timing for it, but I quickly realized that this was no good, and I needed a setup. But luckily, boosters in Trackmania also make an ambient noise. The spinning turbines on the sides make a humming noise that gets louder or quieter depending on your distance to the booster. So with that, I could effectively echolocate my distance to the booster, and when I knew I was about right next to it, I went for the jump. Hey, okay. All right, nice. That is BO5 done. And we have done 20 tracks to be blindfolded. And that concluded the first day. 20 out of 65 tracks in the game already. An amazing start, and I was full of hope and optimism. But I had yet to face any of the big challenging maps that lied ahead. The next day, I returned to the game and continued with the next track. BO6 Obstacle. The start of BO6 is one long series of jumps, and to pass it, I couldn't afford to lose much speed. Driving with a mixture of listening for gears and booster sounds, I was finally able to make it to the checkpoint platform. Great, this is perfect, I think. Um, I crashed the front wall, so it should be... Uh, was that a face plant though? Wait, did I overturn on the jump? Does that make sense? Hang on. Now let's first go with the original idea. Okay, great, great. Yeah, I kinda, I kinda figured, all right. Don't second guess yourself, just go with the gut is the, the moral here. The ending of BO6 was rather difficult too. I had to jump through a tiny gap in the sign, go down the hill, and either go straight into the finish or win a 50-50 coin flip. Let's see if it has the lineup. I'm going, I'm going. Oh, okay, not quite. 50-50, guessing this is on the left side? Wait, 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 what did I do? Ah, okay, okay, okay. I think I know where I am. I remember struggling here so long, though. <laughs> did I say 30 minutes? That was like five minutes. That was legit like five minutes. Somehow, BO6 only took me three minutes. An amazing start to the second day. I continued on to the next track, BO7 Race, where for the first time I got truly disoriented. Trackmania Nations Forever is an old game, and it has a lot of bugs. One of these bugs is that you can straight up clip through certain walls in the game, and on BO7 Race, this was a big problem. Getting the first checkpoint was easy enough, but when I tried to make my way to the second checkpoint, I kept getting stuck in this little prison, unable to make any sense of what was going on. Hmm. Wait, am I turtled? I, honestly, I'm, I'm kind of clueless right now. I'm gonna respawn. I, we'll get there again. After finally making it past the prison, I could now just wall hug and pick up two more checkpoints, and there was just one checkpoint to go. My plan here was to listen for gear shifts to properly time the grass turn to reach the final checkpoint. But it didn't exactly happen that way. Oh! 
Oh, I got it. <laughs> sure, let's go. So yeah, I got a bit lucky here. But after that, all I had to do was one turn to the left to finish the track. <sighs> okay, great, 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 great. We're done. Whew. The next track up was BO8 Endurance, which is a multi-lap track with five laps. And in preparation for the challenge, I discovered that it was actually easier to drive BO8 in reverse. First you wall hug on the left, wait for it to unhug, then you had to listen for two gear shifts and do a perfect sear to the right to get to the road with the checkpoint on it. After picking up the checkpoint, you could respawn and drive the same way back to the multi-lap. But because it has five laps, it still wasn't that easy to do. Okay, here we go. And we're done. Wow. <laughs> Alright, let me guess. Um, 27 minutes, 32 seconds. 35 minutes! Jesus Christ! 35! <laughs> that was a long run, man. After finally clearing BO8, I would face my first real test. A track that I had feared when I first started the challenge. BO9 Acrobatic. This track might look innocent at first but these transitions blindfolded are incredibly difficult to do. The problem is, is that there's almost no feedback on where you are on the platforms. There's no walls to hug, no boosters to listen for, and I couldn't find any great gear shift timings on the track either. For the first time, I felt truly blind when playing this track, and I was left with no other option than to find something consistent. I searched for hours, and eventually I found something. It was by no means a great setup, but if I could pull it off, it had a very real potential of getting me to the finish line. My idea was to get the car stuck on top of the platform, with the left wheels touching the ground and the right wheels hanging off the side. If I got to this position, I could go at full speed and the car would stay on top of the platforms. i then wait for the sound of the car crashing the corner, the car would go onto the next platform and I'd have to ballpark the inputs for the last two transitions to the finish. When I was going through it, it definitely seemed doable, but I vastly underestimated the difficulty of pulling it off in a single run. And the hardest part of it all was actually to get stuck on top of the platform, since there were no good sound cues to know if I had succeeded or not. For the first couple of hours of trying it, the vast majority of attempts were spent thinking I'd finally gotten to the edge, just to hear the car smash into the grass below. And when I miraculously got on the edge, I quickly discovered that ballparking the end jumps was not very likely to work. I had to admit defeat on the first day and rethink my approach. This is that like actually very last stunt. See what we can do. Oh, maybe. Hang on. That's pretty good. Did we actually get it on the last one? On the last attempt? Are we on it? Okay, whether we are or not, I think we'll get it tomorrow. Oh, we're on. The grass. We are on the grass. Yay. Nice. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I needed something more consistent, and many of my viewers tried to help me and went onto the track to look for different setups themselves. One viewer, Damel B, discovered that after hearing the car crashing the corner, you could hold accelerate and brake at the same time. This would ease the car to get stuck on the next platform, and from there you could just rinse repeat, wait for the crashing sound, and then you would get onto the final platform, you could hear the booster sound, and jump into the finish. This was a miracle find, and made finishing the track a lot more feasible. But I still had to get on the edge again, and then execute the setup. I hear platform, it's too late. Yo, that is on. 
I'm almost certain. Oh god. Oh god. Come on. Okay, we gotta think about this in a good way. Um, if I hit the right road border, which I think is the most probable, I hit the... I hit the front of the right road border, back, right, forwards, uh, left. That will not mess up if I hit the skull, the scenery on the right. But I could also have hit like the. I can't have hit left. I think it's actually. I think I got this. But I, I don't know if I want to steer back right, because I might just drive off. Like there, it's very close to driving off here. I know where I hit, kind of. I just don't know what like the best recovery is. <sighs> okay. Um. Yes! 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 We did it! I, I hit the, the front of the finish? Or? I'm trying to horn, but it's not working. I think I finished. Did we actually do it, Chad? Hang on. I, I'm, I have to take it off. Hang on. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Let's go. By a tiny miracle, I'd completed BO9, something that I thought might be impossible, and I could now continue my journey through the campaign. Next up, there was B10, which went by like a breeze, simply being one long wall hug. But the next track, B11, posed some real problems. In the middle of the track, there's a turn, followed by a drop down into some ring checkpoints, and to clear it, your line needs to be perfectly straight. Then, after landing on the dirt, you have to precisely time your steering movement around the dirt mountain to make it to the checkpoint. Somehow, I got past this way sooner than I had expected, and I now only had the ending of the track to contend with. The ending of B11 is a cactus jungle, followed by another precise left turn to reach the finish. And going into the track, I thought I had a setup for the ending, but when I got there, I had completely forgotten it. In order to finish B11, I had to start from scratch and build up a mental map of where all the cacti were, by repeatedly trying a new input, crashing, and calibrating my line. When I finally managed to get through the cacti jungle, the ending turn was very hard to perform, but I remember that there was a dirt mountain right next to the finish. And when a car in track mania rolls downhill, you can hear that it's decelerating, so my plan became to crash the big green inflatable block drive until I heard my car rolling down the mountain, and then steer left to reach the finish. The amount I steer left, it's gotta be inflatable. So now, the play should be, turn my car, go until I hear an uphill, and then go into finish. That should be the play. Hello. How you doing uphill? If I'm thinking about the map correctly, and I th hope I am, the finish is to my left right now. So, please just let it be. Hello? Oh my god, man. Oh. <laughs> what a pain! What an absolute pain! The ending of B11 took me over 30 minutes, but it felt great not to give up and to not have to pass the ring jump for a second time. After that, the next track in the green series were mostly easy. B12 took 3 minutes to complete, B13 took 1 minute, and B14 took 3 minutes. 
I had just one track left in the green series, and that was B15. This track ended up being rather difficult once again, because I had to get past this part in the middle of the track. A drop down through a ring, similar to the one on B11, but it also had a way harder checkpoint to locate. I first tried just driving around, hoping I'd randomly stumble upon it. Then I tried going at full speed and praying that I had the correct line. And finally, I went looking for this small hill on the right side, and when I heard it, I tried to adjust my line towards the checkpoint. This is what I was talking about! That is exactly what I was talking about! I hear it go up the hill, down the hill, and then I just try to adjust left. Let's go, let's go! The plan worked, and after getting the checkpoint, it was easy cruising towards the finish. Using wall hugs and gear shifts my advantage, and with that, I was now done with both the white and the green series.